You can also explore the effects of varying a building's glazing pattern and shading features as part of a net zero building strategy during the earliest conceptual phases of design. It's especially helpful to consider the performance impacts of different glazing and shading strategies as you start to design the building facade because high level decisions made at this point in the process typically have the greatest impact on the building's overall energy performance. We can easily compare different glazing and shading strategies by evaluating our design alternatives using the conceptual energy analysis tools available in Vasari and Revit. Let's start by looking at a few simple masses representing different building forms. We'll cluster several together as they might be in an urban or campus setting so we can consider the effects of the shadows they cast on the landscape and on each other. We can display shadows and the path of the sun in Vasari or Revit to quickly see the shadows that will be cast at this project's location at different times of the day. And at different times of the year. Well, seeing this simple visualization of the shadows is a good starting point, we can get even more useful information about the effects of the sun on our buildings by performing a solar radiation analysis. This type of analysis can show us the cumulative, average, or peak solar radiation that is hitting the surfaces of our buildings as an amount of energy per unit area, for example BTUs per square foot. We can choose the range of dates and time to consider in the analysis ranging from a snapshot at one point in time to considering an entire season or the full year. We also need to choose the surfaces to include in the analysis and rather than choosing all the surfaces, it's typically better to consider a few surfaces at a time and avoid including surfaces that are exposed to sunlight all day long, for example roofs, because including them will skew the range of values and make it harder to visualize subtle differences in the surfaces of interest. Click the arrow again to complete your selection and the analysis will begin. The amount of solar radiation or insulation hitting each of the surfaces is indicated by the colors displayed on the surfaces, and the colors are scaled from yellow to blue, with yellow indicating surfaces receiving the most solar radiation. You can read the range of values that these colors represent in the analysis legend. Or, if you need detailed values, you can export these values as a CSV file to be opened in a spreadsheet program. We can use these solar radiation values to help guide our initial design of a building's facade as we consider the amount of glazing to include on each surface and whether shading features will be needed. Let's enable the energy model and look at the overall energy settings and features. For example, the percentage glazing and the shading attributes to be used in the energy analysis. In general, maximizing the glazing tends to have a beneficial effect by allowing lots of daylight to enter the building and reduce the need for artificial lighting. But surfaces that receive a relatively high level of solar radiation, typically those on the south side of the building, need to be considered especially carefully. On one hand, we'd like to maximize the percentage of glazing area on these surfaces to capture more solar radiation to assist with passive heating during the coolest months. But on the other hand, too much glazing on these surfaces can result in capturing too much heat during the summer and increasing our air conditioning loads. An especially effective strategy is to add shading features to these south-facing windows with a shade that is deep enough to block the sun's rays during the summer when the sun is high in the sky, but still let in the sun's rays during the winter when the sun is low in the sky. When adding shading features to your design, you'll typically find that it's best to use different orientations for the various building faces based on the angle of the sun in the sky when it's hitting that face. For example, when the sun is in the south, it's typically high in the sky, so horizontal shades are most effective. 
but when the sun is in the east or west, it's often lower in the sky. So vertical fins and shades are often applied to windows on these sides of a building. To change the percentage glazing or the shading features on specific surfaces, we can select the surfaces, and then change the energy model settings to assign the values by surface rather than by the default energy settings. Then we can enter a new percentage glazing and enable shading and specify the depth of the shading for that surface. When we analyze the mass model and compare the results of using the default settings for all surfaces versus customizing the glazing and shading features on specific surfaces, we can see that these changes can have a big impact on the energy use intensity, the life cycle energy costs, and the potential carbon footprint. You can explore the effects of customizing the glazing percentage and shading features for different surfaces in a conceptual model in more detail by looking at the exercises in Unit 6 of the BIM workshop. In Lesson 3, you'll look at the solar radiation hitting the surfaces of the buildings in the college campus being modeled in the unit and use these values to decide how the glazing surfaces and shading should be customized. And then in Lesson 4, you'll take the analysis to the next step dividing the surfaces of the buildings into panels, and then applying custom panels with different glazing percentages and shading schemes to best handle the solar radiation being experienced on each of these surfaces. To explore these concepts and the science behind them in even more detail, also take a look at Unit 3 in the BIM curriculum, which focuses on green building design strategies. In Lesson 1, Passive Design, the third exercise explores ways of designing shading features in Revit and how to evaluate their effectiveness using Revit's Shadow and Sunpath tools. It also looks at how you can use Green Building Studio to evaluate the effectiveness of your shading feature design. Lesson 2 looks at the impact of the materials you specify for the building surfaces, both the wall surfaces and the glazing, and the impacts that these choices have on the building's energy performance. And finally, Lesson 5 explores the concepts of daylighting and how to use the data grid tool in Ecotect Analysis to predict the daylighting levels that will be realized within the spaces in your design.